<laughs> I'll get the net tone. It didn't take long. Alrighty. Here, sweetie, which way are you gonna go here? Beautiful. Not a, not a giant, but a solid fish here. Beautiful. Come back your direction there, John. Oh. All right, Tony, one done. Let me be the first one. Welcome us to Traverse City, Tone. Welcome to beautiful, diverse, clear water, Traverse City, Michigan. This took all of about two casts. We just got out here, not a giant by any means, but a good healthy, solid fish, eating high protein gobies, kind of thick. You don't see any thin ones out here. And uh, fishing opportunities are unbelievable up here. Have a good day, friend. Yep. Fish? Good. Yep. <laughs> oh, another nice one. Good job, Tone. How you doing, sweetie? Thank you, John. Thank you. Beautiful. The old drop shot is kicking me so far. Just a little more efficient. Explain that to him. Now I got a tube. That's another beautiful small starter fish. Explain that. Show, show us what you got there. It looks like, uh, well, it looked like you had a, a, a yellow dream shot on there. Yeah, correct? I did. And that's primarily, well, one reason I think that the bright colors. Yeah, they see it better. The, yeah, well, we see it better more importantly than anything is we see it. We know exactly where we are, if we're in the hot zone or whatever. Exactly. But I think sometimes those bright colors like a pink chartreuse, I don't know if they infuriate the fish a little bit, but it tends to get a little bit of a rise out of them, I guess, for some reason. Exactly. And with that drop shot weight, you're able to work it a little bit quicker yes. if, you're, if and, you're just search fishing. Right, and the efficiency of this is, I'm fishing with 10 pound uh, Berkeley Series 8 crystal and it's four pound diameter, and I'm fishing with six pound uh, fluorocarbon from Berkeley, and it slices the water column real quick. Right. Now where you might have a little bit of issue with the tube, you got a little bit of spiraling going on, yep. but with this setup, it's, it's fairly accurate. Wherever I put it, it's gonna drop for the most part. Right exact, there. Right, right there, yep, as long as you feed it a little bit of line. You did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. He, t he ticked me the first time and I just jiggled it. Whoa. <laughs> That's cool. Was that my Pretty drop fish. shot rig? Oh, fish. oh, unbelievable. Yeah, Tony. Nice. I just get in the habit of grabbing these, sorry. Yeah, go right ahead and show it off. Oh, here, no, I hand it to you. I got a habit of handing them off, too. <laughs> They're hard to break. Awesome. Well, KVD Dream Shot in Chartreuse. Let me show you those colors right up close. Beautiful. Boy, he ticked it just like a perch almost when I got close to his bed. We're fishing deep beds right now, but we're gonna let these fish go. This is post-spawn fish, so. We're almost to 4th of July. I will show you this clean Traverse City region water. Off he goes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a nice fish. Look at that fish. Oh, that's a pretty one right oh, there. Oh yeah. I'll stay out of that motor this side. He's a nice one, Tone. <clears throat> Look at the color oh, of that yeah. fish. Yeah. Oh, this that's, is a heavy fish. That's what Tony. we're looking for. Show that one off. Hello, buddy. Let me get you unhooked there. Oh, that's a nice little roamer. No hook marks in them. This is what you can get just kind of blind casting out here this time of year too. These uh, post-spawn females, post-spawn males will kind of hang in these same areas before they move deep, other than the few that stay shallow, the, the permanent shallow residents. But yeah, that's a good healthy one right there. All right, there you go, sweetie. Have a great, great day. Beautiful. Another one's blind kiss. 
Oh, this is another good one. That's crazy. Look at that beautiful fish. Come here, buddy. Tony, I Show that fish and talk <laughs> about that dream shot concept. What what are we doing here exactly? This is my first time ever fishing a drop shot, so. Oh. Well, like I said, primarily we're just showing, getting some we can see, even though that wasn't the case in this particular incident, if you want to call it an incident. Exactly. But um, I'll yeah, look it we're, it's just an efficient way to cover these beds, and um, again, one, what they're doing right now, they're guarding. They don't want they don't want that in there. They don't want to. Emerald China in there. They don't want a goby in there. They want a rock bass in there. They're getting it out of there. That's why they're eating. They're doing their job protecting these eggs that have been dropped a while ago. So the most important thing is what we're doing right now, getting them back pretty quick. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Tone. You betcha. <laughs> oh my. This is a nice fish. Good deal. Come here, buddy. Yeah, the dream shot strikes again. <laughs> you said it. Let's do a search cast, Tony says. I chucked that sucker as far as I could. <laughs> Seems to be working on a regular basis yeah, today. Yeah, show that off, oh. Tony. Another GT smallmouth. That's right. And for yep. your customers, they don't really, like me, I've never fished a dream shot, I mean a drop shot in my life. You don't have to be overly skilled. An hour of instruction. And exactly, talking. yeah. I'll walk everybody through it. I'll even do an example of what it looks like on the boat. I'll throw the weight on the deck and if I want them to keep it in one little zone and just shake it exactly. in place, I'll show them how I can keep it in place without moving it, just shaking the, the bait sure. but not the weight. So, yep, another sweet one. That on the drop? Yep. <laughs> the initial throw. I said I saw his tail. Oh, I didn't hear you say there was a fish up there. Oh yeah, I said there he is. I thought you were just casting. I'll tell you what I love about this Polar Craft front end right here. Look at this. I'm standing here on the bow. Most of them have this little cutoff thing, Tony, and yeah, you the, said the, when you got in the boat. What did you my, say? There's my perch. Exactly. <laughs> If you look, Tony and I were literally both standing on either side of the Garmin R4 trolling motor. And this new Polar Craft has got a huge deck area on the nose itself. Enough where that extra one foot, Tony, can be the difference, no, can No, absolutely. It? All right, awesome, beautiful. awesome, awesome. And that one foot, Tony, can be the difference between oh, seeing and not seeing. Absolutely. And so, this is one of the things, one of the features right here I love about the Kodiak 20 is this massive bow platform that's up above the bow itself because it gives me a chance to catch fish as fast as Tony, which never happens. So we're here on East Grand Traverse Bay and today up here in Traverse City, it was two very simple presentations that we used. And the first one, of course, I've got a custom speed stick that I use. My walleye special is what I use to drop shot with. I'm very comfortable with the length of it. And today, a very simple, a number one gamakatsu hook tied direct in line with no swivels on top or bottom, right down to a tungsten weight, a Strike King 3 8 tungsten weight, and then a chartreuse dream shot. That was our primary weapon today. Now, when we got to some beds where the fish were extremely tough to catch, then I went to nothing but a simple tube, a coffee tube. Now this is a goby, it's a green pumpkin with gold fleck. It kind of imitates a goby. And what I think makes this so, so effective when you get finicky fish that really are tough to catch is that when you lay this directly in their bed or around the edge of their bed, uh, even though we're post-spawn, they're still in that protective mood and they're gonna come over and just inhale this and swim it off to spit it back out. You're not, they're not coming to eat this thing. They're just basically coming to move it. And it's, it's almost impossible to ignore because it laying on the bottom looks just like a small goby. So those two presentations caught all of our fish today. Now, I paired this one with just a simple seven foot mock crush rod and reel combo. 
This is not an expensive combo, but to be honest, guys, pff, I use this thing day in and day out, and it does a great job. Braid line, I've got just 14 pound braided line. I've got an eight pound, 10 foot, eight pound fluorocarbon leader. That really helps in this super clean water up on Grand Traverse Bay. Oh, that's a nice one. The key to that drop shot is it's more efficient. It's not like a tube where it's gonna spiral. If you can get it right to where you want it to go, um, you, you can dictate the distance between the, the actual weight and the hook itself. A lot of times you wanna be right in their face. If that doesn't work, you wanna be up above them a little bit. Sometimes that drives them nuts. And just regular fishing, besides actual sight fishing, I vary my distance considerably. I might go like a two foot leader. I might uh, go down, for, down to six inches or even something on the bottom, shaking it right in their face on the bottom. So it's, you just gotta experiment, think outside the box a little bit with these drop shots. It's not just a hook and a weight. I'll tell you one of the tips I would say is, is that I'd never fished drop shots in my life, but I know Tony is an extremely accomplished drop shot fisherman. So the first thing I did as a past tournament fisherman is that the first 10 cast I watched him throw his job, drop shot, I didn't even fish. All I did was kind of pretend I was fishing and watched his cadence and watched what he did and watched how far he brought that before he just burned it the rest of the way in and made another cast. And it seems like most of the fish we're catching today are biting on that initial fall contact with the bottom and that first five or 10 seconds of twitching it forward. After that, it seems like it's a wasted cast and I learned that real quick by watching Tony. And this right here is why you come and, and, and book with up north smallmouth charters. Because you get beautiful days, beautiful scenery, and Tony knows where the fish are. No guarantee on the beautiful days, but we do our best. Travers usually has some pretty good yeah, consistent weather. Yeah, we have, we have weather. good weather. I uh, try to be humorous sometimes, and I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> Thanks for playing. Look at the beautiful colors on that fish. Oh yeah, that fish was really well colored. Yes, boy, you're a sweetheart. Have a great life, get big. Get big and Bigger. come back and visit the boat later. Eh? Yes. <laughs> That's like calling it, Tony. <laughs> I love Traverse City. That's a relatively healthy one. That's a very nice fish. Good job. Strike King dream shot, patience, 18 feet of water, little pan optics live scope, and, oh, and a lot Let's of head fun. head back in the water. Uh, nice. I'll let you down, Tony. Right. We got to talk a little on this one. This is a healthy, healthy fish. What I really want to do is cast because there's two more spots up there. <laughs> We're going to keep it short, folks. <laughs> John's ready to hitch. Gives a bait back in the water. That's awesome. N nice fish. Good, good, healthy fish. No holes in his mouth. Nice, nice fish. They're healthy. They're eating gobies, high protein food. That's why they get so big now. They're not supposed to be here, these gobies, but they are high protein, so thank you. Hey, thanks for joining us here in gorgeous Traverse City, Michigan. Tomorrow's the 4th of July. Thanks to Captain Tony, his wife, and his family for lending them to us like they always do. Hey, if you get a chance to head on up to the Traverse City region, this is one of the most beautiful spots anywhere in the state of Michigan. They've got tons of awesome fishing seasonally for many, many different species. We'll see you again on Fisherman's Digest. <laughs>